Today we're going to see how we can create a Docker file for a simple Go app. So here we have a simple Go app with the user's endpoint listening on port 8080. And on get request, all we are doing is retrieving the users we have that's predefined up here. So in order to create a Docker file for this Go app, all you have to do is create a Docker file where your main.go file lives. And before we start writing anything out here, let's go over these slides to visualize how these are done. So first we have this host machine. That's your local computer that you're working on. We have this main.go and go.mod file. So that's referring to this main.go and the go.mod file on my local computer. So when we create a Docker file, we're going to define a base image. In our case, that would have to be a Golang image of any latest version that you might be running at the time you're watching this video. And the first thing you want to do is define a working directory. In this case, I'm going to call this directory build, and we're going to copy all the files we have into that build directory. And then we're going to run go mod download and go build to build our go binary in this blue square. And then we're going to define a second image, second base image called distrolist, or this could be some other Linux image or an image called scratch. That's more lightweight than the go image. And we are going to copy this go binary into that second base image. And this is known as the multi-stage build. I'll put a link to a Docker page describing this multi-stage build process in the description box below. But the main reason we want to use this is because it significantly reduces the size of your Docker image because we are essentially building this base image. When we do Docker build with the tag name, we're building this on top of this lightweight base image instead of bringing everything we have along in this Golang base image. So we're just copying whatever we need, which is the Go binary, into our lightweight base image, and we are simply running that. So we can run this image with Docker run and specifying the port that you want to expose to your host. So this 8080 you see here is the port that our app is running on, whereas this 8080 here, that's the port that we want to expose our container to in our host machine. And this will make more sense. I will show you more examples of what this means later in this video. So back in our Docker file, we always want to start with this from instructions to specify your base image. In our case, that's going to be 121-alpine. And we're going to name this stage as a builder so that we can refer to this stage in the second stage later on. And you will see what I mean uh, in a second. So first we want to define a working directory and I'll call it build. And then right beneath it, I'm going to copy everything from the host machine into the container. And in case this doesn't make a lot of sense to you at this point, um, what we are trying to do is copy whatever we have in the source, which is our host machine into our destination. So the source is our host machine where we have all these files right now. And we want to copy all these into the container destination. So remember we saw in this diagram earlier, we're copying everything in our host machine into the build directory of the container. So if we were to break this down, what we are trying to do is copy the gomod file into the build directory, as well as copying the main.go file into the build directory. But because we already define our working directory here, we don't have to specify the build directory here, but instead we can just do dot to specify the current directory. And instead of having to individually specify all the files we have, we can simply do dot here to uh, refer to all the files that we have in your current directory. So that's what copy dot dot would mean. And once we have copied everything into the build directory, we can run go mod download and go build with the output that would be, um, I'm going to call this user API. 
So these run instructions is going to run these commands inside the build directory inside the container. So when we specify the output to be under the current directory, that's going to build our binary under the build directory. But I'm just going to keep it simple as it is. So that's all we need to do for the first stage. And then we have the second stage of this multi-stage build where we can specify the distro list image that's from gcr.io and distro list Debian 12. And please keep in mind, by the time you're watching this video, the Golang or the distro list image might have been deprecated so make sure you go to Docker Hub or GCR.io to make sure what's the most up-to-date image. So all we want to do here is copy this binary into our lightweight base image here. So we can use the copy command, but here we have to add the from flag referring to this builder stage that we have defined up here. So then it knows where to copy this from. So we actually built this inside the build directory. So we can copy this build from the build directory, user API into, let's say user API. But it's a good practice to always specify your working directory. So I'm, I can call this slash app. So in that case, you can add this to your app directory. And then the last thing you want to do is specify the command instruction to say what command you want to run when you actually run this image. So I'm going to run this user API binary inside the app directory. So that's pretty much all you have to do. I'm going to save this file, open my terminal and do Docker build name my image user API with a colon and the name of the tag. In this case, I'm just going to do 1.0. That's the version of this image and um, add a dot here. And this dot is specifying where your Docker file is. So in this case, our Docker file lives in the current directory. So this will just have to be dot. So once that has been built, we can run the container using the run command, specifying the port mapping um, so the first port here before the column is your host port and the second part would be the container port. So if you remember, which I didn't go too much detail into, so this Go app is basically listening on port 8080 and we want to map this port 8080 to a port on our host machine. In our case, we can just keep it simple and map this to port 8080 on our local machine as well. And then you specify the name of the image and this seems to be running at the moment. So you can test that by making a curl request on that endpoint. And as you can see, we get these results as expected. So coming back here, if we actually map this to a different port, in this case, 8082, you realize we cannot get the same result by requesting to port 8080. Instead, this would have to be 8082 because that's the port that we would be mapping our container to in our host machine. And just one more thing I want to add here. So we use DistroList as our base image in our multi-stage build. But another image that's commonly used for development is Scratch because that's um, really an empty image without anything inside it. So that's more lightweight than any other image out there. But that's pretty much all I have about Docker file. In the following video, we're going to see how we can define our Docker compose and reference different Docker files or different containers that we have as dependencies. Thank you all for watching.